Welcome to our webinar series on invention reporting and the use of interagency Edison. My name is John Salzman and I'll be walking you through the reporting of a confirmatory license. Uh, basically, our topic confirmatory licenses are going to be why they're needed, how to report them using Edison, and we'll go through what they are, why they're required, and all of the different components of the license as well as how to create and put them into the system. Uh, we'll go through timeline as to when they are needed, the required text, who has to sign them, and how they can be created with the greatest ease. The regulations, which are a term and condition of your award, specify that we need a license for the U.S. government. This is to enable us to use the invention for federal purposes and to ensure compliance with the terms and conditions of the award. Federal purposes, whether in the Bayh-Dole Act or in the award terms, allow for public access and sharing for other researchers and use by the government. It's not to allow the government to compete with you. The license, as it says so, is valid throughout the world. Now, as far as a few definitions, the confirmatory license refers to the document itself. It's a non-exclusive, non-transferable, paid-up license so the United States government could never be accused of infringing on your patent and that we may use it anywhere in the world. Contractor means any person, small business firm, or nonprofit, including all universities, which is a party to a funding agreement for performing the work under the specific aims of the grant. The funding agreement means not just the grant itself, but also contracts or cooperative agreements that are entered into between any federal agency other than the TVA and any contractor for the performance of experimental, developmental, or research work. Now in Edison, as you report your inventions and your patent activity, there are a series of notification messages which come up to alert you uh, when certain items are, are due to be reported. When a patent record is created, uh, when the patent record does not indicate that it claims benefit to another, which we'll show later, um, and if it is a CIP, you will need a new confirmatory license. But otherwise, the licenses should flow down, so that you need not submit one for every patent application you put into Edison. The next screen is a view of the notification messages that are outstanding, which you can get to from the Edison main menu. Message number 240 corresponds to a patent record in Edison that appears to require a license and does not have one. You're able to click on each message record to resolve the issue from the message list. They should open in a new window, although this is slightly dependent on the settings of your individual browser. The list of messages, which you see in front of you now, show message 240, which indicates for every distinct patent application under your institution that appears to need a confirmatory license, either because it's not linked to a record that already has a license, or because one is missing or was not accepted. The circled docket number, patent docket number, on the right-hand side is the do patent docket number for the record or one of them that seems to need a license. If you click on it, the patent record will itself open and you'll be able to add the file, a shot that I'll show you a little bit later. When you go into the patent record, it is easiest to create the license either as you create the record or as you modify a patent application record. After you hit Submit, which enters the record into the database and saves it, you'll be prompted with a Print License button. You can then click on the button, and the license document with all of its information pre-populated will appear as a PDF file on the screen from which it may be signed and submitted. This is a screenshot of what the confirmatory license button looks like after you save a patent record. It's circled here on the upper right, and you may click on that, and you will see the document with all the information, including the invention report number, your grantee or contractor institution, the patent title, and so forth, and the funding agreements that were attached to the invention that cover the patent. So if you click on that document, it will generate the confirmatory license. Once it is made, you can print it and have it signed by an authorized organizational representative, which is an organization person, employee, who, whose signature binds the organization. That organizational representative 
may electronically sign with a certificate authority signature or uh, you may sign it using pen and ink, scan and upload. This is a picture of what the license actually looks like. The invention title is at the top, the inventor is below, the patent or application serial number, one document per license, the grant or contract numbers we pre-populated, and the signatory information at the bottom. The required text is in the middle. Please do not modify the text. Uh, we need this for proper recordation so we can ensure the government's rights are protected. All it does is refer to the language in the regulation and the funding agreements that funded the work that gave rise to the invention. Once it's done, scan it to a picture, PDF or TIFF file. Um, TIFF is somewhat important if you're using pictures because it does not degrade the quality. Um, and then scan it or save it using a digitally signed copy to your computer and then upload it into Edison as shown on the following screen. This is a modified patent window which should look familiar. You would upload the digitally signed or scanned image of a paper signed document onto your computer, indicate the location of the file when you click on the choose file button as circled, and then save it into Edison and modify the patent record. The system will then automatically clear the notification message. Does every record need uh, a confirmatory license? No, not if they're properly linked. One confirmatory license can cover an entire patent prosecution in most cases, which I'll show you in a moment. Properly linked means the patent record is basically linked to another in one of two ways. It can expressly claim benefit to another patent application if the docket number is indicated in the patent record that shows the one that it claims benefit to that has a license, or if it shares a non-provisional patent application number with another patent. Looking at the illustration in front of you now, the linking is shown in the large circle on the left. If the top patent had a license, it would cover all of the ones beneath. So one license would cover the resulting six additional records, which would not be needed. So it's a, a time saver. Just please be certain that all grant or contract numbers are listed in the invention at the very top with the arrow, the green box. Uh, that is so the grant numbers indicate correctly on all of the licenses submitted for the patent. Otherwise, they'll be incorrect and you'll need to be resubmitted. We have a series of user guide and manuals that are available at this link. And we have a help desk. Should you have any questions, they'll be able to help you or to forward you on to an expert who can get your question answered. Thanks very much, and I hope you've enjoyed this module in our webinar series. Thank you.